Hibiscus Moon here with Hibiscus Moon Crystal Academy. I'm here for another episode of the voicemail Q&A and I'm just having so much fun with these. I love hearing your voices. I'm so grateful to you for submitting these questions to me. All right, so let's get to it. Today we have Trudy. So let's listen to what Trudy has to say. Hello, this is Trudy calling. Um, I had a few questions. Um, I wanted to know what grounding stones to use. What would be good grounding stones? Also what a drip stone is. And what about prosperity stones? And also what does entrain with me? Thank you very much for your time. Bye-bye. Oh, you are so welcome, Trudy, and thanks for all the questions. So on other voicemails, let's try to keep it to one question so it can kind of flow better and easier with the video because I don't want it to get too long. So I'm going to try to pack in these answers really fast. Grounding stones. Really good grounding stones are black tourmaline. I really like that. This is black morion quartz. This is a new favorite of mine for grounding. Hematite where here we have this smooth polished hematite and this is rough hematite also smoky quartz and actually the black tourmaline the hematite and the smoky quartz i call that a sacred grounding trio the three of those together make such a wonderful crystal body layout for if you're looking for grounding as the all-around purpose crystal healing session all right dripstone dripstone is another name for stalactites which come down from a cave ceiling, or stalagmites, which grow up from the bottom of a cave. And usually they're calcium carbonate, so limestone based. I have seen them as quartz, really cool quartz stalactites and stalagmites, amethyst, but those are rare and harder to find. Then you asked about prosperity stones. What are some good prosperity stones to use? There are a lot, and there are a lot of grounding stones too. Um, I try to give people um, suggestions for stones to use that are inexpensive and easier to find if I can. For prosperity, I really like green aventurine. I like citrine and there's two different kinds of citrine you can get. There is the orangey colored citrine. This is a Madeira citrine that's very dark and this is baked. I don't mean it's a bad thing. Please go on my blog and um, I did a recent blog post on the difference between baked citrine and natural citrine. This is a natural smoky citrine. In the sun, you will see a yellow hue to it, which is what makes it citrine. Here's another natural citrine. Here's another natural. This is a very, very light citrine with a phantom in it, actually. Another one for prosperity is emerald. And I did a recent video on emerald. This is an emerald slab. You can see the really nice gemmy pieces of emerald in here. So those are really great for prosperity. And then you asked, what does entrain with mean? Because I use that a lot. The definition of entraining with something, we're usually referring to waves, energy wave action. So to entrain with something means for the waves to become in phase with each other or synchronized with each other. So when a crystal helps to entrain us with it, because that's usually the way it goes, we usually end up entraining, becoming in sync with the crystal in our environment. What it's doing is it's actually bringing us closer to its vibrational frequency, which is why we like working with crystals. Crystals can do that for us more so than vice versa. It's very rare that we can entrain a crystal with us. And that gets into a little bit more detail about why and how and all of that. I put that in other videos. I teach about it in my course, but it's kind of a lengthy topic. And thank you so much, Trudy. I am so grateful to you for submitting that. That was a wonderful, beefy set of four questions. Okay, everybody, have a great week. Namaste, bye. Can we work with too many crystals all at once? Is yes, you can. Um, I feel like just having them in a room on display.